So welcome, 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 welcome. Um, so honored to be here. My name is Amaya, for those of you who are not familiar, but I'm kind of assuming that those of you who are coming to this call today have seen me or spent time with me somewhere in the internet ethers or maybe in person. And um, I am the founder of the Woman Rising School, where we really journey deep into earth wisdom and moon mysteries. And really, it's, it's, I see it so much as a school for those of us to step forward more into our priestesship and our leadership. So um, I'm honored to be here. And so today is part one of part three in our open house series. And um, we are going to talk today about plant spirit medicine and the lost language of plants. And I'll kind of give you uh, a way in which the call is gonna flow. Um, and really, we're, we're, I'm also going to share about the Woman Rising um, Practitioner Program, Flower Essence Practitioner Program. This is our fourth year, and we've had 51 women go through the training over the past three years, and it's been extraordinary. Um, so we're gonna, I'm going to share about that, and we'll answer some questions, and, um, and then I'm going to give you a practice. So um, how we start all of our calls is by really beginning with a grounding, really coming to our, into our bodies and um, really creating a space for this 90-minute call um, that's separate from everything that you have been doing up until this point today and everything that you will be journeying into after. So from wherever you are listening, and for those listening to the recording, we also welcome you here. And so from wherever you are, wherever you're seated, you may be inside your home, you be, may actually have um, be out on the earth. Um, and so for wherever you are, just taking a moment and closing your eyes. Hmm. Hmm. Breathing. Feeling your inhale, noticing your belly and your chest rise. And on your exhale, feeling your belly and your chest fall closer to your spine. Hmm. Hmm. Taking a moment to appreciate the life force that moves through you in every moment, whether you are present to it or not, that keeps you alive, that is supporting you to live your visions and your dreams and share who you are with your family, your community, your loved ones, your clients. So breathing in and out. And imagining from your sacrum, imagining on your exhale, roots growing from your sacrum, down your legs, into your feet and your toes, through the floor of the room that you're in, through the topsoil of Mother Earth and deeper and deeper into her soils, rooting you, anchoring you into the wisdom of Gaia, letting her hold you and cradle you and strengthen you And remembering that in the same way you seek to ground into her, she is seeking to connect with you to live out her wisdom and her gifts. 
Mm, so breathing into your body, feeling what is present as you root into her, connect into the great mother. Hmm. And on your next inhale, leaving those roots in the most delicious way that they want to be left there, feeling the pulsation of the earth's currents and bringing your awareness back up through her soils in the top soil that's a little rockier, back up through the room that you're sitting in, the floor, back up into your feet, up your legs, back up to your sacrum and moving that energy, continuing upwards, up your spine, up to the crown of your head and then opening to spirit above. Letting yourself expand into the unseen. Feeling the way in which you can totally let go and surrender, knowing that you are guided through the currents of the cosmos, through the currents of mystery, of God, goddess, spirit, your own spirit teachers and guides. Mm. Knowing that spirit is always in celebration of your greatest dreams and visions coming forward. Mm. And on your next exhale, letting, letting these energies just shower back over your crown, like the grace of spirit pouring forth over your crown, back down through your entire being. Mm. Savoring what that feels like. And as you feel yourself in this woman's body cradling and really bringing forth the energies of Mother Earth and the energies of spirit, that this is your birthright, that you have chosen to incarnate in this body to hold these energies and bring these energies forth. And that it is one of the greatest privileges. So feeling what is present for you in this moment, what is alive as we sit here, grounding us into this space. knowing that there is a circle of women surrounding you. That each of them is feeling what is alive and present. That each of them is on her own journey of reclamation and resurrection and remembrance. And taking two more deep breaths here. Mm. 
Mm, and when you feel ready, very slowly opening your eyes, letting the light in, moving from your own familiar and comfortable inner realms to these outer realms of Zoom and our collective. And so we welcome you. We welcome you with so much love and honor and devotion as we talk about plant spirit medicine and communicating with plants. So again, my name is Amaya, and this is part one of three in our open house series for our Woman Rising Flower Essence Practitioner Certification Program. So um, I'm going to just very briefly share about the program and then we'll, then we'll dive into our materials today. Um, so I know that there are many of you, we've been getting a lot of emails of women who are curious about the program, who want to do the program, who are nervous about doing the program, but are ultimately feeling the call of the plants. And um, that to me is the most important piece. That's um, what all of this program is grounded into is our connection to Mother Earth and to the plants and the trees that they are truly the ones who are creating healing and we are the facilitators through which that comes through. Really, we are the facilitators that the intangible can move into the tangible. So um, this series is really meant to help those of you who are curious about the program, who want to take the program, but haven't quite committed to it to, you know, excuse me, have some experiences with me and my teachings and to really feel the vibration of the plants. Because again, it's, it's not really about me. It's, it's about the plants calling you forth. So again, this is our fourth year and um, we've had 51 women go through the last three years. So we have this beautiful collective that's growing and blossoming. And um, I'm pretty sure that every single one of those women um, will say that the program was transformative and life-changing in many different ways because there's many different components of the training. There's our own personal journey, there's our journey with nature, and then there's our journey as a practitioner. So it's this really beautiful blend of um, different pieces coming together for each woman. And, um, you know, part of what makes this program really unique is that we focus on Karuna's here. We have some past graduates here, so maybe we'll put you on the spot in a moment to share. Um, thank you, Karuna. Um, we have, what was I gonna say? I got lost in the, the bliss of the flower essence training. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful blend of clinical, you know, really understanding how to counsel and mentor and facilitate healing mixed with learning shamanic practices of communing with nature and nature spirits and also this real piece of obviously you know understanding flower essences and trauma and um, how to formulate formulas so that women have really powerful healing um, you know for those of you who have been reading my posts um, you know, maybe just while this program is open for registration, but even before that is, you know, I, I myself am incredibly committed to my own personal emotional freedom and therefore incredibly committed to other women's. And um, I just, in all my studies of, you know, everything I've dabbled in or really touched in deeply over the last 16 years, flower essences to me have been the fast track for emotional healing. And there are so many women and men, of course, and children, but we focus really on women. There are so many women who are really struggling right now, really depressed and anxious and irritable and overwhelmed and um, living really through the lens of their traumas and their woundings from the past. And we see it in our friends we see it in our family, we see it with our clients, and flower essences give us a 
fantastic, phenomenal, really powerful and potent healing modality that starts to change people's lives. And for those of you who are already on the healing path or already doing facilitation of this sort, um, you know how amazing it feels when you can bear witness to a person reclaiming themselves or a person really coming back into their truth and releasing conditionings and hurts and limiting beliefs. So flower essences do exactly that. And it's part of my dharma to teach about them and spread spread them all over the world. I really highly, highly, highly value them and they've saved my life and it's my honor to teach about them. So we'll get into, um, sorry, I don't know how to take off phone calls coming in on the computer. If anyone knows how to do it, let me know. Um, so we're going to get into why we want to communicate with nature and the importance of it. And then we'll open it up for questions. And of course, questions about the practitioner program. The practitioner program does start April 11th. It ends August 8th, right before the Lion's Gate portal of the full moon at that time. And so it's a really potent time for you to um, be graduating and really owning your DNA coding inside of you of who you really are. So everything is purposely scheduled in this way. And um, we it's a small group. There's 22 women. And so there's lots of one-on-one -on -one time and deep exploration of self. And it is by application only. So please send in your application if you're interested. Um, okay, so let's talk about our... Um, communication with plants. So there's a lot of really great books. Um, I can type into the bar if you're interested, you know, into the chat bar here, if you're interested in reading more, learning more about connecting with plants. And um, I want to just start with, and again, for those of you who are my mailing list, and those of you who follow me on Instagram, you saw a little bit about this, what I'm about to talk to today, is this wounding piece. So <clears throat> I was sharing that there's two woundings, but these, and these woundings go even deeper. So I was sharing, um, for those of you on my mailing list, um, on Instagram, you, you, you have to be on one of those that have shown up here. So, um, that there's two wounds. There's the wound of childhood that is, you know, linked to many different traumas and, uh, many different experiences. And then there's the wound of being disconnected from nature. And this wound actually has two parts to it. So there's the internal wound of the damage to our core of not being connected with nature. So how that plays out in our lives individually. And that, excuse me, and then there's also the piece of externally, how it plays out in the collective. And we're seeing this all the time. We're seeing the way in which Mother Earth is devastated and destroyed because of corporations, because of greed, because of um, really a, just a complete disconnect from her, right? So we had a massive movement around Standing Rock and preserving the waters there. And we have people who are really fighting all over the planet right now. Um, Rainforest Action Network and Sierra Club and I mean so many little tiny nonprofits to big um, nonprofits and even corporations who give back to the earth. So that wound shows up for us both internally and externally in the world. And for me, you know, when I was watching Standing Rock unfold, it was like everything that was happening to the earth, to her waters, is really what happens inside of us. You know, the way that we dismiss our emotions, which are the water, the way in which we, um, Oh, somebody's sending in a little text here. Okay, Emma, your internet's not working. Catch the replay. Okay, sure, no problem. Um, so everything is a is 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 a mirror of each other, and it's actually a psychology that I started studying in college called eco psychology, and it's a it's a very intricate and beautiful psychology that 
um, everything that happens to the earth happens with inside of us. And so every time we see devastation, it's actually a devastation that's happening within us. And these are major, major wounds that we carry and we feel in our bodies. And it's how then we start feeling disconnected from everything. We start feeling disconnected from our family, from our beloved, and ultimately from our own self because of that original um, push away from nature. So this is a really important piece of us returning because not only does it then help to preserve and sustain Mother Earth, this planet that we live on, but it also helps to heal us. And that in itself will continue to perpetuate and create more peace and harmony on the planet. So I just wanted to start there with this really big important piece that our um, kind of ignoring, hiding, denying of our innate connection with Mother Earth actually creates very damage to our own self and then, of course, to Mother Earth. So we know that for hundreds and thousands of years, those that lived really closely connected to the earth had an understanding that there is, I'm, I'm just like, I keep looking outside because I'm looking at the trees and everything's blowing in the wind and it's so beautiful. I'm just getting affirmation of everything that's kind of coming through right now. Um, but um, so, you know, native people and those who live closely connected to the earth who weren't running around on their cell phones and cars and traffic and trying to do this multitude of this human experience of pushing, 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 understood that there was an innate intelligence in nature, right? And so we have lots of stories of shamans and medicine keepers and medicine women and healers who really understood this brilliance, this energetic current that runs through all of nature and is the source of all of life. And now we know for those of us who are really called to study with plants, you may have seen, you know, all these experiments that are being done on food or plants, right? So I just saw somebody post the other day. Oh, it was Danielle Laporte. She posted the other day an experiment that her and her son did with an apple, right? So we've seen it with water, but now people are doing it with food of, you know, for 30 days, there's one apple that you speak really negatively to, and there's one apple that you praise. And it, it doesn't have to be an apple, but, um, you know, you get the point here. And of course, the one that is praised stays beautiful or maybe has like a couple blotches of brown over a time period. And the one that is really belittled or spoken negatively to is just like covered in brown. It's decaying, it's rotting. And we're seeing that plants have intelligence, right? So even though those that lived really closely connected to the earth have always known that, we in the Western world really like to have a visual and a science behind it. So there's that piece. And then I actually haven't seen this in real life, but one of my students just told me that she went to a, some sort of gathering and the, or lecture and, and the person there had a machine that you link up to a plant and the machine sings the song of the plant. And the, the person who was doing the lecture did a couple different plants and they all had different songs and vibrations and tones. And I mean, that just sounds like my kind of party and my kind of gathering, but it's, we're seeing with technology, we're seeing with our eyes that there is an intelligence, there is a spirit that resides in all of nature. And that same spirit lives inside of each of us. And so I'm imagining that those of you who are here on the call and those of you who are going to be listening to the replay have had experiences in nature where you felt that oneness, right? You just, you felt that complete. I remember once I was up in Northern California and I sat down in this, I had gone for a walk somewhere and I sat down and I was looking at this grove of redwoods and I was going through, I don't 
I, oh, I was going through a time in my life where I was just questioning, like, where do I want to live? And um, what do I want to do? Like, who do I really want to express my passions towards? And I remember seeking out these answers in nature and looking at this tree that was kind of across a little gully from me and having one of those moments where I was one with the tree. The tree was me, I was her, and everything that I was feeling about that tree, because I had just been kind of looking at her and just taking in her beauty and her strength and her wisdom and her um, generosity and just like, uh, just totally in awe of this tree and realizing that everything I was seeing in her was already inside of me. You know, that everything that I was acknowledging in her of her beauty was what was actually alive within me. And so we can, we, we've all had experiences like that where we have felt in union with nature and it's so profound and it's so beautiful because you realize you're not this body, this suit isn't really about who you are. It's about what's underneath. It's about your essence and your spirit and that's truly why I love flower essences is because they, when you ingest a flower essence, they peel back and they release anything that's not of your essence, that's not of your spirit, which is most of the things that we've endured and conditionings we've believed about ourselves throughout our lives. So when we talk about plant spirit medicine, specifically with flower essences, it's really a returning back of understanding that spirit lives in all of nature. And that, you know, as we know, we need plants to survive and they need us to survive. There's a constant aspiration, respiration of oxygen and carbon dioxide. And so we actually physically need each other to live. And then on a deeper level, emotionally and spiritually, I believe that we need each other to live so that we can continue to evolve into the highest and most beautiful and authentic versions of who we are. So um, that's a little taste of, you know, what we're all kind of experiencing in our, in our bodies and why the call from the plants, whether it's this flower essence program or something else that you do, but why this call of the plants is so important is really it's the call of the mystery. Really it's the call of spirit, of God, goddess, whatever word feels most resonant to you. It's the call for you to really take your place and walk the lineage that's been laid out for you since before you were born. And so for those of us in our flower essence school, it's really this, the lineage of the earth wisdom keepers and the medicine women. And it's, you know, I, I say this to all the women who apply once we get on the phone is I don't take it lightly that you've heard the call and you've taken action because so many of us hear callings, right? Sometimes it's from plants. Sometimes it's a calling to work with children. Sometimes it's um, our own sexual trauma that's a calling to then pass on um, healing for others. So we all hear callings. We all hear spirit, but we also all don't um, heed the call. So it's a really big deal for those of you who are hearing the connection to go deeper into communion with plants because they're calling you to go deeper into yourself. There's really, there's no, there, there's no separation. Everything that you're hearing is a journey for you and a deeper connection for you. Um, so when we miss out on this calling or we ignore it as we do, well, not only will it continue to circle back to keep nudging or pushing or shoving us, but there's, there can be a tremendous grief when we don't listen to nature calling us, when we really kind of exile our intuition and put it aside because it doesn't quite make sense. So we can feel a lot of grief at that time and, um, part of what we're here to do is 
to really reveal the depth of who we are. So for me, I, I was really called to working with plant spirit medicine when I was in college. I was studying herbal medicine at that point, and I just felt the strong peace that I wanted to get deeper. And the thing with plant spirit medicine is you're, you're really using the spirit of the plant to dive into a deeper relationship with yourself and therefore Mother Earth. So um, there's a great book for those of you who are, are interested in this called Plant Spirit Medicine. I actually was trying to find in my garage my uh, college thesis. I wrote my college thesis um, 17 years ago on plant spirit medicine, which was um, really this whole idea that connecting and using the spirit of a plant is perhaps even more powerful than using the physical part of the plant. That when the spirit of a plant can connect into your own spirit, the healing that can occur moves then from the inside out. So it touches your emotional and your physical body. So it's a really beautiful book and it actually has practices on working with different plants and asking yourself specific questions about how to work with plants. Um, there's also another really great book that I love that's a little bit heady. Um, so you definitely can't read it in one sitting by any means. Um, but it's by um, Stephen Harrod Booner, who has written a lot of amazing books. I mean, he's an incredible herbalist and um, has written books for men and online. And um, this book, the, the Lost Language of Plants, it, it is very heady. It's very technical. I mean, I've had this book, I don't know, for a long time, and there's tons of little dog-eared pages, but I don't even think I've ever fully gotten through the whole book. It's, it's so beautifully written, and really, for those of you who have that kind of more science-oriented mind and kind of want that, like, deep information, this book's going to be really good for you. But this book really speaks about the... This, spe this book really speaks about the grief and that comes from not being connected and forgetting that the earth is alive. And he has coined two different words, actually. Um, I forget. They're oh, biophilia and biognosis. And basically, they, he just goes into this whole beautiful analogy of you know, how our disconnect from the earth has um, really influenced our own physical, emotional, and spiritual suffering and that of the planet. So, and there's all these great quotes and stories in it and, um, but very, very technical. So you kind of like take it, take page by page by page. Um, yeah, actually it says on the book, some, somebody who endorsed it says both poetry and medicine. And that's, that's exactly what it is. It's very poetic and very heart centered, but also deeply enmeshed in like, he has a whole, I just turned to this whole thing about pharmaceutical drugs and the EPA and it's very, very in depth. So that's the lost language of plants. And I couldn't find my plant spirit medicine book to show it to you, but that's by Elliot Cowan. And that's a bit more, experiential. And um, there's also a great book by Pam Montgomery, who I interviewed for my thesis as well. I'm sure you can find it somewhere. It's called, um, is that called Sacred Plant Medicine? It, well, anyway, I can't remember the title, but it's by Pam Montgomery. She wrote it probably about 18 years ago, around that time I was writing my college thesis, and she had studied with El Elliot Cowan, so she had kind of taken some of what she had learned with him and from her background as an herbalist and created her own system, and she really speaks about in that book the importance of, you know, this lost language of plant peace is really, it's not really a lost language. It's actually that there's been a language that we've just kind of haven't been taught 
And when we can attune ourselves to that language, we really open ourselves up to a, a whole relationship. And so she really talks about this idea of partnering with the earth. And that when we're in partnership with the earth, we respect it and honor it. So just if you think about your own relationships in your life, whether that's with your partner, your children, your parents, whoever it is, when you're in relationship with them, when you create intimacy with them, you have a much deeper investment in that relationship. And same goes for plants and trees and flowers and really, you know, rocks and minerals and all that too. But we're talking specifically about um, plants. And so when we partner with plants, we come into that deep communication. It's not a lost language. It's more just about us remembering to refine and, um, and attune ourselves to those vibrations. So I want to talk a little bit about that now. And, you know, in what I want to share with you is, is a practice. And when I was thinking about it last night, I was thinking this practice is so, so simple. And it is taught in probably most every couple's retreat and tantric workshops and meditation workshops and it is so profound when we talk about plants and trees. So if you could just give me one sec, I need to lower the, the shade here because the sun's going right in my eyes. Oh, that's much better, okay. So part of communicating with a plant is understanding that you're communicating with spirit and sometimes this takes a little preparation for us because we are coming from the 3d world you know and i'm sure without knowing each of your stories that you live very full and very busy lives so you know even just taking a moment to think about everything that you did today before this call so I know I did a lot and there's so much movement and frenetic energy and just like, okay, you eat breakfast, you go to the bathroom, you brush your teeth, you take a shower, you, maybe you make your bed, you um, take care of your child, you take care of your animals, you drive to work, you stay at home and work, you do laundry, you put the dishes in the, like, there's a lot that we're doing that we're holding space for in our world. And so <clears throat> when we choose to connect with plants, we need to remember that the easiest way to access spirit is by taking a pause, just like we did at the beginning where we grounded into ourselves and into the space and created um, sacredness just in that couple minutes. The same thing we have to do when we talk about communicating with plants. So we, we don't just like walk up to a tree and it's like, hey, what do you have to tell me? Like who, no one would like that if we were like being courted by somebody and just like, hey, sh sh you know, show me your body, you know, show me your essence. We, we need to be slow and connect into a different vibration. So some of you have access to connect into that place really quickly. And some of you, it takes a little bit more time. But in, and in order to go even deeper, so if you are already talking with plants, in order to go deeper, those of you who are new, we just, we take a moment. And so going out, like I'm looking at this oak tree right in my front yard right now. So if I wanted to connect with this oak tree and most of the time, the plants that you're gonna to wanna to connect to are plants that have literally been waving you down. And maybe you haven't been listening or maybe you are just seeing them for the first time, but most plants are calling to you. You know, like there's sometimes where, you know, you could be walking with a friend and you're both really called to different plants. Like there's specific plants that are calling to your specific spirit and your essence. And it's really important to listen to that. 
So for me, if I was wanting to connect with this oak tree in my front yard, which of course I would want to because it's standing in my front yard. It's the only tree in, my, in the front of my house that holds my family, right? So thinking about the place that you're in, the land that you live on, even if you live in an apartment in the middle of Manhattan, there are plants around you. So of course, I'm going to want to connect to this beautiful oak that's protecting my family. And that honestly, if one of the limbs fell, it would land right on my house. So I want to be in union with that tree. And I want to know what it's feeling and what it needs if it needs anything. And so a very simple practice is, again, like I said, this is taught pretty much across the board in many different workshops when we're talking about becoming intimate and relating is a simple breath practice. So if I were going out to this oak tree, well, first of all, I would go and sit by this tree and I would introduce myself and I would just, you know, just begin to be in the same presence and same space as that tree, right? Again, it's really important to approach a plant or a tree just as you would a friend or a new friend or a partner. It's being very respectful and kind and mindful. And so sitting with the tree, introducing myself, I might say something like, I'm just here to connect with you. Really as simple as that. I feel a lot of gratitude to you, Oak Tree. Thank you for protecting my home. Thank you for your oak medicine, you know, whatever it is that, that you feel like you want to share with that tree or plant, flower. And then simply breathe. So one of the things you can do is start just with your regular breath. So you're just sitting and you're breathing. And then as you sit and as you breathe, Really bringing your breath and your awareness even lower. So bringing it maybe into your womb space, into your pelvis. Bringing it down your legs. You know, really just connecting to the physicality of you. Because the plants and the trees are the physicality of Gaia, right? Gaia expresses herself through the trees and the flowers. And you're an expression too. So just really rooting yourself into your body. And then a simple breath practice, again, just it's like you're just breathing and you're just present, is to do a looping breath. So if you, if you want, just for a moment, closing your eyes and taking some deep breaths. So just, again, letting yourself... Feel your body. If, you're, if you were outside, you would feel the earth underneath of you. You would feel the winds caressing your face, your hair, your arms. You would hear the birds. You would maybe smell the flowers and the plants. Like your senses start to awaken when your eyes get closed, you come inside and you ground into your body. And so you can sit and breathe for as long as you want when you're sitting out there. And you can do this also with a house plant. It doesn't have to be outside. You can experiment. And so from your perineum, from your root chakra, you're going to bring your awareness there. And if you need to, you can sit on your hand right now to just know where that energy is going to start. And on your next inhale, you're going to bring the energy up from your root, up the back of your body, up to your sacrum, up your spine, the back of your neck, up the back of your head, 
over the top of your head and back down. So back down your forehead, the front of your face, down your neck, your chest, your belly, your womb space, back down to the perineum. And this is what's called a looping breath. So let's just do this for a few moments. Again, starting at the root and bringing your breath up the back of your body and letting it loop back down as you exhale down the front of your body. This gets you into a powerful current that is very similar to the Earth's. And if you were leaning against a tree or against your plant, you would feel the looping. Of life in that plant or tree. And over time it could be a couple minutes. It could be longer. You come into resonance. You come into the similar vibration to that of nature. Mm. And everything becomes clear and clean and crystallized and pure. There is a lightness. There is a shift in colors. There's a shift in sounds because you've come into a deep intimacy with nature. And sometimes it can just be so powerful to just sit in this looping breath for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, you can really go into a deep meditation and a deep presence with that plant, tree, flower. And so we'll just do two more looping breaths here. Again, but when you bring it up your spine, you inhale. And when you exhale, your breath loops back over the front of your body, back down your perineum. I know it feels really good to do this and I'm also going to invite you when you feel ready to open your eyes back and come into this space. And so this is really, this is breath that you can do with your partner to get you into a deeper intimate space. This is breath you can do when you just need to anchor into your own self. And of course, this will attune you to the language, to the essence, to the vibration of a plant. And like I said, once you're there, you may just sit there. You may just completely enjoy the union that you feel, that there literally is, you know, especially if you're sitting against a tree, you may not even feel that there's a distinction between the bark of that tree and your own body. You know, it's, it can get really cosmic when you come into this deep awareness and appreciation when you're attuned in the right way. 
So it may be that you just really enjoy the presence of one another, right? It's, we don't always do that. We're kind of usually rushing on to the thing that we want to accomplish, but it can be so beautiful to just be present with one another. And that in itself is highly healing. Um, and then you can also begin to ask questions, you know, as I was saying before. So if there's communication that you wish to receive from that plant or tree, you can begin to ask at that point. And some of you are going to be real auditory. You know, you're literally going to hear the plant speak to you. Some of you are going to have visuals, you know, that you you just see things and you're interpreting them through your body. So everyone has an experience with the unseen in, in a slightly different way. And all are really potent and important. So um, you can begin asking questions. So for those of us who work with flower essences, we generally start to ask questions like, what is your medicine? How will your gifts um, enhance the lives of my brothers and my sisters? Are there gifts that I need to be aware of? And so we just, we start just again, just imagining that you're with a beloved, right? And if you're with your partner and you've really attuned to each other, and then you start speaking to each other and really inquiring into each other, the messages you get are so much clearer, so much more understandable. They're not mired down in um, assumptions, projections, and limitations. There's an expansiveness to what it is you're going to receive when you're attuned to the vibration and the energy of another. And in this case, we're talking about another being nature. So you can ask lots of questions. You can, again, it can be about your life, but for those of us on a flower essence path, we're asking about the specific medicine and how to use it. And of course, we end any connection, whether it's just simply being in the presence of nature or asking questions to have things revealed is we always end with some sort of gratitude or an offering, right? So we've just received something really profound and we want to make sure that we're in that beautiful partnership of relating where we then get to offer something. So it can be as simple as a bow, putting your hands on the earth, putting your hands on that flower, that tree, and just taking a moment to extend your love and your gratitude. It can actually be an offering, right? So in Native American cultures, there's always the offering of tobacco, sweet grass, um, sometimes fire, but you know, in this situation, we wouldn't be offering fire in that way. And um, sometimes people will take a piece of their hair, you know, because it feels significant to them and that, that feels a significant offering to nature. So um, it can be, you know, I've, I've, I've imagined, you know, a rose blooming in my heart and offering those rose petals back to nature. So it can be really anything that feels, anything that comes through is important. And again, it's all part of this process of you being in the trust of that attunement and in the trust of your relating and partnership to that plant. So it's, it's a really beautiful process. And again, this is like a really, really simple process for you. And it's, it's mostly becomes um, challenging because we don't always create the time for it. And when we create the time, as I was sharing, you know, to just kind of circle back to the beginning, when, we, when you create time to really be present with nature, with your relationship with nature, a lot of that grief and sorrow that we feel from being disconnected to ourselves or from the greater collective begins to dissipate. And when that grief starts to dissipate, we have so much more, we have more access to our soul, to our essence, to live the lives that we came to live here. And so it's this beautiful kind of weaving together, you know, nature supports us, we support nature, 
and it grows and it spirals. So from our own individual self to our families, to our communities and to the planet that's in dire need of our stewardship right now. So um, I think that's all I'll say about the practice because I'd rather actually keep it really simple. And for those of us who are in the Northern Hemisphere, this is, you know, a beautiful time to um, kind of begin walking in nature if you haven't already because it's spring and things are starting to sprout and there's going to be the trees themselves and the plants are coming alive in a different way. They're, they're obviously always alive, but there's an energetic current that's happening inside of us as well, right? But that's just coming out. That's, that's wanting to rebirth and resurrect. And so when you're on a walk, really set your intention before that walk of going to a plant that calls to you and then doing the practice that we just said. And then for those of you who are in the Southern Hemisphere, obviously you can still do it. It may be a little cooler, and it may be that some of the trees have lost their leaves or the flowers aren't in full bloom, but there still will be nature calling to you. And again, as you set the intention and you go to whatever calls to you, be prepared to be surprised, right? Sometimes we're like, oh, I'm definitely gonna go to that, you know, pink hibiscus because I've seen her the past few days and then you go for a walk and it's not the pink hibiscus who's like hello I'm here and I'm so beautiful it might be the tiny little white blood root that's on the forest floor that is calling to you because she has something that's going to support you and that you have something that's going to support her this is a that's what partnership is it's a synergistic way of relating and experiencing each other that's about giving and a taking it's not just about you receiving so i would love to hear you know how this experience goes for you to really create time over the next few days in this energy you know that we're sitting in that we're talking in of really coming back into this lost or this always present language of plants that's been calling to you to experience for the first time or perhaps deepen into so please and enjoy i mean it's just like it's so spectacular and special to sit with a tree or a plant and start receiving and hearing information Or even sometimes just start receiving and hearing gratitude, right? So sometimes a plant will just say, thank you for sitting with me. Thank you. I had this plant growing up in my backyard. My mom just just like three months ago sold the childhood home that I grew up in. And we had this tree that my mom and I always felt a deep connection to. And it um, it was right it was, it's called a um, sweet gum. And it, he, I mean, it was the tallest tree in our neighborhood. We could, we, you know, it's one of those, like you look up and it was just like, you, it was like you kept on looking, looking, looking up. And I remember when I first started studying plant spirit medicine and started um, really, plant spirit medicine is really like a simpler way of, of knowing that you're actually partaking in shamanic practices. Because when you're communicating, you're attuning yourself, as I keep saying, into the vi- that vibration. But there's also a way in which you're crossing the realms a bit, right? You're, you're kind of moving from this waking world into the liminal space and crossing the realms into hearing and perhaps also seeing the unseen, Right. And so sometimes that just takes a little bit more anchoring. And even if you're one of those people that can kind of go like that into into those spaces, it also is really important to set up sacred space like that so that, um, yeah, that's important. I won't get into it. Why now? But it, it is really important because it can leave you really open. So um, anyway, this tree when I finally learned how to communicate with plant or remember how to communicate with plants, I remember speaking to that tree and her just saying how happy she felt that I was talking to her, that she had watched my sister, uh, was tears. She had watched my sister and I grow up and she had loved, we used to have a, um, a swing set 
right sort of at the base of her and we had a dog and she she just said over and over how she just loved being um, part of that experience that it filled her with so much joy mm. to witness us play and explore and um, it was just it was such a deep experience for me to connect with her so sometimes it's not necessarily like we get these like vast downloads of how this is how you're going to use my medicine sometimes it can actually just um, be just gratitude you know, thank you for hearing me. and Thank you for taking the time to connect with me and to see me as important. And um, when, my, when my mom just sold this house, I was visiting last summer and I was just getting in the car to leave to go to the airport. And I knew I wasn't going to be back to this house before she sold it. And as I got to the bottom of the driveway, I was like, oh my gosh. And stopped the car, ran out, and I ran to the backyard and I just said my goodbyes to this tree and I was crying and crying and crying and it was so powerful. It was so powerful and I felt, you know, more sad about actually leaving that tree and all that she had provided to my family than about leaving this home that I had grown up in that we had had so much love and joy in. So um, it's really just, as I said, just be open to what comes forth as you're communicating in these plant spirit realms because um, there's so much magic and miracles and um, that'll happen that really most of the time can leave us speechless but fill our being with um, with so much so um, so <laughs> It's funny because my mom is actually visiting right now and I hear her in the next room and I know she would be like crying if she was sitting right here with me as I was sharing this story because we just both, she didn't have the same experience where she was actually talking to the plant because she never engaged in that way, but she always felt deeply connected to that plant. So um, I think she, she said she did her own she wouldn't use the word ritual, but she did her own ritual when she left that house of just, you know, thanking that tree and saying goodbye. And, you know, it's a profound um, reminder for us that wherever we live, those plants and those trees become the fabric of our families. And um, really, I would just, before we open for questions, I would just like to complete with saying that, um, coming into deeper connection and communication with plants allows us to see things from a much bigger place and really puts can put a lot of our lives into perspective so there's just there's so many benefits and um, magic of being able to relate with plants and again it's on every level Whatever the benefit is, it creates healing and it creates radical transformation and life changing experiences for us that, you know, most of the time are incredibly challenging to even relate to somebody else, right? And so that's, you know, another beautiful piece of this is that so much of our experience with plant spirit medicine gets to just be ours, you know, like there aren't tons of things in our world that we keep really just tender to our hearts, that we keep as secret or sacred. It's not secret in like, like a secretive, I'm, I don't want to share, but in a real secret, tender way because we're, we're, we're talking about the language and the communication of plants, but it's very hard to put our experience into language because it's just of essence and it's just of touching into spirit. So I know for me, even doing this work for so long, it's, it's incredibly challenging to explain at times. And I've learned over the years that it's actually just nicer for me to just keep it connected for me that it creates a, a, a actually a deeper intimacy between me and mother earth that this is something that we get to experience together and that she's offering and gifting to me and that i get to then carry out into the world so 
Mm. Makes me tear again too. So <clears throat> I would love to, I, there's only a few of us here live on the call. So I would love to see if there's any questions about this. And if there are, you know, you can type it in. There's like a little chat box at the bottom of the screen. There's like a little bubble. You can um, either ask a question or create, you know, type in a share of maybe your own experience and um, yeah, we'll just wait. We'll just wait a moment as we as we breathe this in. And I'm going to take a sip of water. Mm. Mm. So. If you already have a practice that's similar to this, I would just say try the looping breath, like really add that breath because it really can add another dimension to your connection with nature. And of course, I would just, I would love to hear from you about the messages, the insights. I get a lot of emails actually from people who have gone at like, like we have, I have never taught them or anything like that, but they've seen my work and they write to me about their experiences with a tree or a plant. Sometimes they have a question about it, but sometimes they just want to share. And so I love reading about them. I've actually kept a, like a file of them because I just think they're so amazing and they're undeniable what happens for people. So um, if you want to share with me at any time, please feel free. And um, for those of you who are interested in our Flower Essence Practitioner Certification Program, I know that there are women who are interested but couldn't be on the call today. So I'm just going to speak to, you know, a few minutes about it is, you know, what we, what we just went through here is just like the beginning of what we go through in the Flower Essence Practitioner Program. And there's lots of time for you individually to really um, strengthen your relationship and your connection with Gaia, with her plants and her trees, um, flowers as well, mushrooms even. And um, so a lot of it is going to be, you know, teachings that I give, but when it comes to plant communication and plant connection, most of it is going to be done on your own. And as I was saying, most of it is really kept in your being and then helps you to become a better practitioner. The more we can hear the wisdom of the plants and the trees, the better we become at really understanding how to formulate, the better we are at when we make our own flower essences and we, instead of just looking on the internet and seeing like, oh, this company makes this and what do they say about this, really coming into a deep trust of what we're hearing from the plants and the trees. So there's lots of, in the practitioner program, there's lots of emphasis on this, but a lot of it takes place on your own because it really is your own partnership and relationship with Gaia. And then if you're called to the retreat, we do more, you know, deeper work with this, with shamanic practices and, um, <laughs> I see your smile, <laughs> and um, doing, collective work as well in group with our connection to nature but you know our connection to nature is 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 pivotal in this flower essence training it's it's i mean i would say you know all these other aspects are important the clinical and coaching skills and all those pieces because they make you a better practitioner but your connection with the plants and the trees is really where it all starts it helps you incarnate it helps you be a more whole person, it helps you be a more connected practitioner and formulator and holder of space. So it's, this is, I started this series with Plant Spirit Connection because to me it really is the, the, the pivotal piece that the rest of the modules kind of um, grow around and blossom through. So um, we start April 11th. There are two scholarships available. We've been getting a bunch of these questions, you know, about tuition and scholarships. And so I'll just answer those. We have two partial scholarships available. 
So if you are interested in applying, please make sure you do that because they will be given, you know, to others. And if that's part of, you know, your process in registering and enrolling, I want to make sure that you receive that. Um, the partial scholarship is $1,000 off. So it takes you from $3,800 to $2,800. And for all of our um, enrollment, we have payment plans. We have pay in full, you know, some, some people like to do that or are able to do it. And we also have a four month payment option and an eight month payment option. And the eight month payment option just really makes it very accessible for a lot of women who are really wanting to do it and trying to figure out the finances. So um, if you get a scholarship, I forget what the breakdown is, but you can divide it by eight and it makes it very doable. And if you pay the regular fee, it also um, is doable. And then there's an optional retreat. So the online course is four months. It's complete, it's perfect, it's beautiful. And, um, and then there's an optional retreat for those who can energetically, mm, emotionally, financially get to the retreat. Um, it's a three and a half day training in um, Southern California, and there is an additional fee for that. It's an amazing um, experience of taking these teachings and embodying them even more fully. And the sisterhood there is off the charts. So um, I'm trying to think of other questions we've been receiving. Oh, um, if you choose to become certified, there are certification requirements. You have six months to complete those requirements. And those are just important for me to see that you understand the information and that you're a responsible practitioner. And so they range from, you know, really being in this conversation of plant communication, of attuning yourself to a plant and writing about that experience and making a flower essence and sharing about her medicine. And then there's the more clinical aspect of working with clients and handing in case studies and your formula. So it's kind of a it, it appeases both sides of our really esoteric and really tangible parts. And one of the questions that was asked last week was, have we ever, um, like, has anyone not passed their requirements? And so I've, I've never had anyone not pass their requirements. Um, anything is possible, of course, but um, usually when you go through the program at the end, you have a really solid foundation and understanding of this information. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, I want to work with people. I want to work with people. And the requirements when you hand in your case studies and formulations are usually, you know, pretty beautiful. I do offer reflection and feedback and fine tuning to each woman. And, um, but I haven't had anyone like not pass the requirements. Um, Let's see what other questions have come through. So about certification requirements, the partial scholarships, um, the timing. So as I said, we start April 11th, and um, this is the only time we're going to offer it this year. It's offered once a year, and um, we're always kind of fine tuning it. So this year I made it a touch longer and actually next year it's going to be even longer of a program. So it's, it's always like I'm evolving. And so of course the program is going to evolve and um, there is a piece on growing your business and that's an important piece that's not really taught in most herbal or flower essence trainings, but it's really important to me that you have support as you step into your leadership and your healership and can you know grow a business from this modality and um, help a lot of people um, let's see what other questions we received um, hmm. one-on-one -on -one session so you get um, three one-on-one -on -one sessions with either myself or one of the other three practitioners who are part of this program who have gone through this training. And you, so it's one every month for three months and the program's four months. And that's for you. That's for your journey, for your growth and your evolution and your transformation. And you will understand 
how the flower essences live through you to create healing. So if you're working on boundary issues and your relationship with your mother and you're, you know, having a session with your practitioner, you will understand how these essences excavate and move through you. And that in itself, not only is it so powerful moving for your own self and your healing, but it makes you a much better practitioner so that when you get a client who's coming forward with similar experiences and you make a similar formula, you will know how it's going to show up for her. So we can only take others as far as we take ourselves, and it's an important piece of this journey. And um, it's it's actually what stands out in this program compared to any other program is your own healing journey. So I know there's probably more questions because we we we've, we've really been getting questions every day, and um, Eliza, my assistant, has been mostly answering them. But every now and then she'll forward some to me. So if you have other questions, please make sure to email us and. We will get them out to you. And Karuna, you're here with me. So if you want to add anything, you can, about your own personal experience or as a practitioner, you can please. Wow. I love this program. <laughs> um, life changing on personal levels and business levels. Um, you're amazing. <laughs> and the way that you bring forth the medicine is just second to none. So um, yeah, for my personal journey, everything that you said was true. The fast track to the emotional healing. I mean, you know, clearing patterns that I had been working on for years and years and years. And um, for me, the it's actually funny. I was just reflecting because our program, the one I was in started like two years ago. Um, okay. In March. Yeah. And um, my grandfather died like, I think it was like four days before the program mm -hmm. started. And um, I was reflecting because it was coming on the two years and I was like, wow, loss being such a big thing for me in my life. Um, I'm not going to say it was easy to get through his, but man, did I process it. Like that anniversary of like, when my grandmother died when I was 13, it was like 15 years later, I was still feeling the same thing on her anniversary. Like it just never went anywhere. Mm -hmm. And it was only two years for him. And I just was so grateful that I started this journey right after that and that I felt so complete and whole and good around his passing, um, which was just really profound for me because loss has just been my biggest crutch in my life. I can't get over it. Um, and I get stuck in that sadness and it's really easy to stay there and think you have to be there to be connected. And mm. so it would, yeah, that was a really nice reflection to realize like two years had passed and it's only two years and it's a whole two years and so much has changed and lifted and your life is totally different 150 percent different yeah like not even like more than that like a thousand percent different like everything is just so different and it wouldn't be without the flowers and the plants i mean even my physical healing journey was with the plants and mm -hmm. i don't know if i i don't know if i would have even allowed myself to know that i had lyme if i didn't have that option of treatment it's mm. really Profound and beautiful, and I'm so excited for all the women that are going to sign up and, yeah, be a part of this container. Mm. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. It's been just an honor to witness you. And, you know, part of what Karuna is sharing is also just, you know, her, your willingness to really go into those deeper, darker places, because that's the flower essences are inviting us into our spirit, you know, and they're inviting us, as I said in the way beginning, to excavate anything that's not of spirit. And so you really willingly stepped into those places that are not always easy to feel and not always easy to really heal. And it's been so beautiful to watch you. So thank you. And yeah, I'm always honored. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah, and the flowers make that journey easier. It's like yes, they do. Out. It's like 
we got you, we're supporting you and it's going to suck, but we're here. And that's <laughs> like, just, I get the chills when I say it because that was what gave me the strength to go in there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. That's an important piece is, you know, that they are the fast track to healing these things that we've kind of made ourselves believe will be ours forever and we'll never let go of. And yet, and so they invite us to feel these things, but they make it in a way that's doable. Mm -hmm. And that's really important because we, we, if we're just kind of handing someone medicine where they go into rupture and get stuck, it's not really that beneficial for them, but we're offering medicine that may move you into rupture, but eventually moves you back into the rapturous place of who you are and what you're meant to do. So that's an important point. Thank you. So I think we'll leave it at that. And for those of you who want to apply, please apply. We'll get on the phone. And um, if you have questions, please email us and we will be delighted to respond. And ultimately, you know, it's important to me that this feels like the next step in your path. There's no, like, there's no pressure. There's no, um, like, guilt in, in choosing to be on this path or not. It's, it's it, yeah. So um, if you feel it, please apply. And we will very humbly and in service welcome you into this circle of amazing practitioners and women. So thank you so much, and I look forward to hearing about your journeys with plants and trees and nature and spirit and receiving connections and transmissions and insights and realizations and all these amazing things that we can just by, just by breathing and attuning and crossing the veils um, to connect from the seen to the unseen. So sending... So much love to you all. Blessings on your journey. And um, oh, and before we go, part two of our open house series is on Saturday. This Saturday, that's April 1st at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And we're going to be talking about the importance of being a really impactful coach, counselor, mentor, guide, facilitator, whatever word you like to use. Um, and I'll be giving some more teachings about that because it's very, very important. So hope to see you there and we will have a recording and so much love. Mwah, mwah. Blessings. <laughs>